This video shows cytoreductive surgery and hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy for the treatment of pseudomyxoma peritonei. Our patient is a 54-year-old white male with a chief complaint of abdominal distension. He's had a prior mesh repair of a right inguinal hernia. The CT scan showed tumor beneath the right and left hemidiaphragm, tumor infiltrating the greater and lesser omentum, normal small bowel and small bowel mesentery surrounded by omental metastases, a prominent mucosal, and in the pelvic slices, fluid within the pelvis. The procedures performed included a resection of the laparoscopic port site, right upper quadrant peritoneectomy, left upper quadrant peritoneectomy, greater omentectomy, pelvic peritoneectomy, cecectomy, cholecystectomy, and lesser omentectomy with omental bursectomy. Following these resections, the patient received hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy with systemic fluorouracil. The intraoperative and postoperative information included a peritoneal cancer index of 22. Our time for the procedure was 12 hours. We didn't use any blood products. The completeness of cytoreduction was zero. And following the surgery, EPIC chemotherapy was performed with intraperitoneal fluorouracil. The hospital stay was 33 days. There were no grade 3 or grade 4 adverse uh, events. Our abdominal incision is from xiphoid to pubis. Because of the prior laparoscopy, we'll resect the laparoscopic port site that's directly above the greater omentum. Skin traction sutures are placed on the abdominal incision in order to facilitate the division of the linea alba and a simplified entrance into the abdominal space. The skin traction sutures allow us to completely dissect tissue from around the laparoscopic port site. A peritoneal window is uh, created so that we can both digitally and visibly explore the anterior parietal peritoneum. Tumor nodules are not palpated on the anterior parietal peritoneum, so we'll not resect the peritoneum any further on this patient. A self-retaining retractor is placed at the four quadrants of the abdomen in order to maintain our exposure throughout this long uh, case. We know that we're going to need to remove the peritoneum from the undersurface of the right and left hemidiaphragm. Removing the xiphoid process will facilitate dissection beneath the hemidiaphragms. This is the plane that will be used for subsequent right upper quadrant peritoneectomy. We will perform all of the uh, subsequent dissection with the ball electrosurgical tip.
copious mucoid fluid is uh, aspirated away. We're uh, initiating the uh, pelvic peritoneectomy by dissecting the adipose tissue from around the urinary bladder. This is the portion of mesh that was used for the prior inguinal hernia repair on the right side. We'll plan to remove all of this mesh as part of the uh, pelvic peritoneectomy. Strong traction is placed on the edge of the mesh using uh, coker clamps in order to uh, facilitate the removal of the uh, prosthetic material. The right deep epigastric artery is involved in the uh, mesh and will ligate and divide it uh, prior to further dissection in this area. From the pelvic peritoneectomy, we extend the peritoneal resection into the right pericolic sulcus. We are unable to separate the testicular artery and vein from the prosthetic mesh. Therefore, they will need to be uh, ligated in continuity and then divided. We're beginning to see the muscular surface of the uh, bladder. In order to facilitate the peritoneectomy in and around the bladder, we'll localize the urachus. And as soon as we find the urachus, we'll elevate it with an allus clamp. And this uh, uh, anterior traction on the urachus will greatly facilitate the removal of peritoneum from the visceral surface of the bladder. We can see that the uh, peritoneum deep in the uh, pelvis is uh, involved by numerous small tumor nodules.
We're turning our attention now back to the upper abdomen, and we're continuing with the right and left subdiaphragmatic peritoneectomy, high voltage electrosurgery, and the ball tip are used in order to find the proper plane between the muscle of the diaphragm and its peritoneal surface. As we get towards the tendinous mid portion of the hemidiaphragm, some blunt dissection in order to separate peritoneum from muscle is uh, possible. Starting in the pelvis, we're removing the peritoneum from the left pericolic sulcus. Is a small branch off the left testicular artery which is ligated in continuity and then divided. The descending colon is uh, elevated away from the peritoneum that covers the left pericolic sulcus. Again, we're turning our attention to the upper abdomen and the removal of the extensive tumor from the undersurface of the right and left hemidiaphragm. The mucinous tumor here is uh, adherent to the left lateral segment of the liver. It's not invasive into the liver itself, but is invasive into the glissens capsule. With the ball tip in its hockey stick configuration, we're performing a glissens capsulectomy wherever there's visible tumor. The round ligament is divided. We'll turn our attention to that uh, later in the uh, dissection. Strong traction is maintained on the peritoneal surface of the hemidiaphragms in order to achieve the visualization necessary to complete the diaphragm stripping. When we come to the tendinous mid portion of the diaphragm, we'll try and use blunt dissection in order to facilitate the uh, complete removal of the peritoneum from beneath the hemidiaphragm. We move from the diaphragm surface back to the liver surface, first dissecting on the diaphragm, then dissecting on the liver in our attempts to remove this envelope of mucinous tumor from the right and left upper quadrant. A 
a peritoneotomy is often made between the right upper quadrant specimen and the pelvic peritoneectomy specimen. The peritoneum from the surface of the right retrohepatic space is dissected away from the surface of the perirenal tissues. The tumor is especially adherent in the right retrohepatic space. It's also quite adherent in and around the triangular ligament over on the left lateral segment of the liver. We continue to move uh, first from the diaphragmatic side of the uh, dissection, then to the hepatic side of the dissection in an attempt to remove the envelope of mucinous tumor from beneath the hemidiaphragms. The very large omental cake is uh, placed on broad traction in order to uh, facilitate a release of the greater omentum from the transverse colon. The peritoneum on the anterior aspect of the transverse mesocolon is removed along with the specimen. The tumor is quite adherent at the splenic flexure, and care must be taken not to damage the colon at this anatomic site. A diverticulum is uh, uncovered and it's marked with a stitch to be closed at a later time. We see the cecum, the base of the appendix, and this large mucosal which is attached to the appendix. We'll remove the periappendiceal tissues along with the large mucosal. The appendiceal artery is ligated in continuity and then divided. We can see some tumor nodules adherent to the terminal ileum. These will be dissected away using a curved Mayo scissor. The tumor is quite adherent to the cecum, and so it will be uh, uh, transected away from the uh, ascending colon using a uh, linear stapler. With the appendix mucosal in my hand, I can squeeze and uh, further mucus is extruded 
from the mucosal. We're attempting to isolate the right gastroepiploic artery and vein. These structures will be uh, ligated, clamped, and then ligated again. The subpyloric space contained a moderate amount of tumor. It's uh, uh, dissected away from the antrum of the uh, stomach. The uh, multiple branches of the uh, gastroepiploic artery will be individually ligated and then divided. There's a small amount of tumor that remains beneath the antrum of the stomach. We'll use electrosurgery to dissect away the tumor that is adherent to the undersurface of the stomach within the subpyloric space. Tumor is moderately adherent to the tissues on the anterior aspect of the pancreas. These tissues are carefully, bluntly dissected away uh, using uh, a, uh, a Russian forceps. We're able to isolate the splenic artery. It is uh, ligated and then suture ligated. Tumor within the uh, greater omentum is adherent to the tail of the pancreas. Electrosurgical dissection with water cooling will be used to separate the mucinous tumor from the pancreas tissue. We've isolated the ureters on both the right and left, and the peritoneum of the rectovesical space will be defined on the rectum and also beneath the urinary bladder. The small tumor nodules on this peritoneum will be resected. This is the peritoneum on the uh, lateral aspect of the uh, rectum. We're able to remove the peritoneum of the rectal vesical space away from the peritoneum on the anterior aspect of the uh, rectum 
without leaving behind any large amount of tumor. We approach the peritoneum of the rectal vesicle space from the rectal side of the dissection and also from the bladder aspect in order to completely remove the peritoneum that is uh, on the surface of the rectal vesicle space. A cholecystectomy is performed in a routine fashion. We'll ligate in continuity.